The problem here in the Chesapeake Bay is there's too much nutrients entering the bay. Every day, billions of gallons of water flow into the Chesapeake Bay, carrying, among other things, nitrogen and phosphorus. These nutrients normally give life, but if there are too much of them, it can become very difficult for fish and plants to survive. So it was just natural to, to start asking the question, well, where are these nutrients coming from? And that just led us to go further and further inland to look at the effects of agriculture and urbanization of the watershed and how it's delivering more and more nutrients to Chesapeake Bay and other nearshore waters like Chesapeake Bay. In his quest to trace the path of nutrients, Tom Jordan may have found a natural solution to a man-made problem. When too many nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, pour into the bay, it creates massive algae blooms on the surface. These blooms block light to the plants below the surface, like underwater seagrasses. Because of this increase in the supply of nitrogen and phosphorus, there's an excessive growth of algae. Now the light doesn't reach the plants, and there's been a big die-off of the submerged aquatic vegetation that live on the bottom of the bay. Tom's research focuses on the biggest sources of nutrient loading. One of them is farming. Farmers often fertilize their crops with heavy amounts of nitrate to help them grow larger and faster. But farming isn't the only source. Nitrogen can also come down from the air. Scientists can trace these nitrates and other pollutants in the atmosphere through rain samples. So here we are on the top of Zurich's 120-foot high meteorological tower, and we've got all these instruments here. And, and this is how we measure the nitrogen that's coming to the earth from the atmosphere. Nitrogen that, that's gotten into the air from automobiles, trucks, power plants, or even from manure, from, from livestock waste. A rain collector on the tower opens up whenever it feels pressure from a downpour allowing scientists to see exactly what's coming down from the clouds. And we sample the rain up here on this tower. And then we have this collector here, which is we call the wet-only collector. It has a sensor right here that senses moisture and makes this lid open up when it's raining. So that's what would happen if it started to rain. And Altogether, maybe 20 or 30 percent of the nitrogen that's delivered to Chesapeake Bay comes through the atmosphere and then through the watershed to reach the bay. But what happens to the nitrogen on the ground? Crops only absorb about 30 percent of the nitrate from fertilizers. The rest of it goes on a different journey. What about the nitrogen that isn't taken up by the crop? Most of that gets converted to nitrate, which is a very soluble form of nitrogen and it leaches through the soil, soaks into the soil, and gets into the groundwater. And then it starts following the groundwater, and it's forced to go laterally to the nearest stream, which is that way. Pollutants and nutrients flow through groundwater and enter streams that act as highways that directly feed the Chesapeake Bay. The weir over this stream was built to help monitor the water's chemistry. This is where we measure what comes out of the watershed. We talked before about the rain falling onto the land. The watershed is that area that gathers up all that, that moisture and carries it to the stream and then delivers it in, in flow towards Chesapeake Bay. A lot of nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, get swept up in that flow and we want to measure how much is coming off the land right here. The weir automatically collects and stores samples in a small cabin beside the stream. The way it's set up, the more the water flows, the deeper it gets in the dam. And there are instruments inside that shed that measure the depth of the water behind the weir. And from that depth, you can calculate the flow rate. In fact, the instruments calculate the flow rate, and they control pumps. And they pump more frequently when there's more flow. 
The samples give a picture of the nutrient concentrations flowing into the Chesapeake. Down here are the jugs where the samples accumulate. And you can see how it's split between the two jugs and they've already got some sample in them. The sample accumulates over a period of time and then we collect it and bring it back to the lab to analyze it. In looking for a solution to this huge problem, nature may be providing a clue. Tom looks to locations that are already providing some decrease in the nitrate levels, otherwise known as sinks. Natural sinks have given insight for a potential solution to the problem. The biggest and perhaps most effective means of keeping nutrients away from oceans are forests, particularly forests that are located between a farm and a stream. We have farm fields on either side of us and a stream runs down the middle. And the, the groundwater from the fields flows towards the stream and emerges in this stream. But on the way, the riparian forest removes most of the nitrogen escaping from the corn fields and stops it from, from flowing down the stream where it's gonna eventually reach the Road River and then from there out into Chesapeake Bay. The data from this small forest show that nitrate levels are high at the edge of the cornfield, but go down to near zero at the stream's edge. We sample the groundwater with these groundwater wells, little PVC pipes that you see sticking up. And we measured the, the nitrate content of the groundwater. And you could see that when you get to the stream, the concentrations in the stream water are a lot lower than what you see at the edge of the forest. So that tells us that the forest is taking up nitrogen in the form of nitrate, stopping it from getting to the stream. So you know that the forest is removing a lot of nitrate that otherwise would have gotten to Chesapeake Bay. To reduce nutrient runoff in the Chesapeake Bay and all oceans, there are two options, create more sinks or create fewer sources. If we don't reduce nutrient runoff, marine ecosystems are going to keep losing light and keep losing oxygen that sustains them and us.